let's say that I have the vector, actually I'm going to give it the vector a, and let's say that it is equal to 2, 1. So we could draw it right over here. So it's equal to 2, 1. So in the horizontal, if we were to start at the origin, in the we would move 2 in the horizontal direction and 1 in the vertical direction. So we would end up right over here. Now what I want to do is think about how we can define multiplying this vector by a scalar. So for example, if I were to say, if I were to say 3 times 3 times the vector a, which is the same thing as saying 3 times 2, 1. So 3 is just a number. One way to think about a scalar quantity, it is just a number versus a vector. You're, this is giving you, it's giving you how much you're moving in the various directions right over here. It's giving you both a magnitude, magnitude, and a direction, while this is just a plain number right over here. But how would we, how would we define multiplying 3 times this vector right over here? Well, one reasonable thing that might jump out at you is, well, why don't we just multiply the 3 times each of these components? So this could be equal to, so we have 2 and 1. And we're going to multiply each of these times 3. So 3 times 2 and 3 times 1. And then the resulting vector is still going to be a two-dimensional vector. And it's going to be the two-dimensional vector 6, 3. Now I encourage you to get, get some graph paper out and to actually plot this vector and think about how it relates to this vector right over this vector right over here. So let me do that. So the vector 6, 3, if we started at the origin, we would move 6 in the horizontal direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 3 in the vertical. 1, 2, 3. So it gets us right over there. So it would look, it would look like this. So what just happened to this vector? Well, notice, what, well, one way to think about it is what's changed and what has not changed about this vector? Well, what's not changed is still pointing in the same direction. So this right over here has the same, same direction. Multiplying by the scalar, at least the way we defined it, did not change the direction that my vector is going in. Or at least in this case it didn't. But it did change its magnitude. Its magnitude is now three times longer, which makes sense because we multiplied it by three. One way to think about it is we scaled it up by three. The scalar scaled up the vector. That might make sense or it might give an intuition of where that word scalar came from. The scalar, can, when you multiply it, it scales up. It scales up a vac vector. It increased its magnitude by three without changing its direction. But let's do something interesting. Let's multiply our vector a. Let's now multiply it by a negative number. Let's actually just multiply it by negative one, just for simplicity. So let's just multiply negative one, negative one times a. Well, using the convention that we just came up with, we would multiply each of the components by negative one. So two times negative one is negative two, and one times negative one is negative one. So now, negative 1 times a is going to be negative 2, negative 1. So if we started at the origin, we would move negative, we would move in the horizontal direction, negative 2, and in the vertical direction, negative 1. So now what happened to the vector? Now what happened to the vector when I did that? Well, now it flipped its direction. Multiplying it by this negative one, it flipped its direction. Its magnitude is actually has not changed, but its direction is now in the exact opposite direction, which makes sense that multiplying by a negative number would do that. In fact, when we just dealt with the traditional number line, that's what happened. If you took five times negative one, well, now you're going in the other direction. You're at negative five. You're five to the left of zero. So it makes sense that this would flip its direction. So you could imagine if you were to take something like negative 2 times your vector a, negative 2 times your vector a, and I encourage you to pause this video and try this on your own, what would this give and what would be the resulting visualization of the vector? Well, let's see, this would be equal to negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So this vector, if you, if you were to start at the origin, remember, you don't have to start at the origin, but if you were, it would be so you'd go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. It looks just like this. It looks just like this. 
And so just to remind ourselves, our original vector a, our original vector a looked like this. Our original vector a looked like this. 2, 1 looks like this. And then when you multiply it by negative 2, you get a vector that looks like this. You get a vector that looks like this. Let me draw it like this. And I'm and purposely not having them all start at the origin, because they don't have to all start at the origin. But you get a vector that looks like this. That looks like this. So what's the difference between a and negative 2 times a? Well, the negative flipped it over, and then the 2 flipped it over, and now it has twice the magnitude. But because of the negative, it has twice the magnitude in the other direction.